Hey guys, welcome to today's live stream on the Bruce Williams channel. It's Tuesday, the 26th of April. We're coming up on May. Uh, I wanted to stream about a few things tonight. I have uh, a massive unboxing <laughs> to share with you. Uh, biggest Oris box I've ever seen. I'd like to take a few questions. I've got some, um, just some cool stuff to share. I've got like uh, some watch related swag that I want to share with you guys. And uh, I have a few questions I've taken from Instagram that I'd like to respond to today. So uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have a specific question, go ahead and throw it in the chat. In the chat, excuse me. I'll try to, you know, get those as much as possible. And uh, shout out where you're tuning in from, what you have on wrist. Appreciate it. Hey, anonymous watch guy, what's going on? Good to see you. Um, let's see. Let's start with that massive Oris unboxing. Um, I haven't looked at it yet. I took it out of the outer box, but, uh, give me one sec. No joke. <laughs> it is so big. It's super cool. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have to do it off to the side here. So bear with me guys. Uh, check that out. Isn't that awesome? So it's an older Aquas uh, wall clock that, you know, oh, wow. I'm going to have to set it up and, and uh, put it on the wall. It's from several years ago. Might be broken. Might have to glue it apart together. Anyways, it was a, yeah, no joke, Brian. That is big. Um so where it came from actually is a pretty cool story. I was out in Pennsylvania uh, a week and a half ago and the sales guy, Brent Miller Jewelers, Brad, who I've worked with for a while now said, Hey, I've got this old Oris wall clock. Um, do you want it? And I said, heck yeah, <laughs> I'd love to uh, put that up in the wall. You guys can see, um, where is it? Right there is my mundane wall clock. So I'd like to start a collection of awesome wall clocks and that Oris is just right up my alley. So, um, yeah, I want to shout out Brad. Hey, what's up? YZ80 wearing the new hammy. He bought a Hamilton Intramatic when he was out in, uh, at the meetup at Brent Miller Jewelers. So, uh, shout out YZ80. Jeffrey has the Chronomaster Sport. Very nice watch. What dial do you have? You have the white or the black? Yeah, apparently the clock has hollow end links. Yeah, uh, so I've got to set that up and, and put it together. Hey, Tennessee Mike, what's going up? What's going on, man? Hey, Larry C., good to see you guys. Hope your Tuesday is going awesome. So that was the Oris unboxing. I'm going to put that together, hang it up on the wall, and I'm pretty excited about that. That's, pre that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, let's do – you guys want to – you want to look at the other swag? So I went, uh, let, me, let me backstory this a little bit. When I went to Pennsylvania, I stayed in Clock Towers, which is the old Hamilton factory, uh, awesome vintage building that uh, the owner of Brent Miller Jewelers, he purchased one of the condos when it became available. He's renovating it. And I got to stay there as I was staying in Pennsylvania. And uh, when I walked into the condo, there was this like little gift basket. And uh, this was one of the things, it's a Tudor, backpack or a laptop bag, which is pretty cool. And I have a few extra things in here. I think you guys would appreciate. Tudor baseball cap. And this one, this one's awesome. Here's a Speedmaster baseball cap, but it's a flat bill and it's big and it has the moon printed on the inside. So I, uh, I really like this. I'm one of those, uh, big headed guys. <laughs> I need a, I need a proper, uh, large baseball cap to actually wear it. The smaller ones, I, they just, they don't work on me. So I'll probably do a giveaway of some of these items. You know, I try to do a monthly giveaway on the channel for uh, members of the Patreon group. So, Hey, what's up? Canyon Jack, Jake, Mike, speedy Tuesday. DC. Yeah, it is awesome, Brian, for sure. 
Hey, what's going on, Silverback? Swagalicious for sure. So those two things were in there, the, the two baseball caps in that uh, laptop bag, and then I have a couple other things. Let me just unzip it here off to the side. There's a book about uh, Lancaster County. Uh, it's, it's a kid's book, and I believe it's also autographed by the author. Right here, you can see that. And it just talks about some of the things in the area, which is really thoughtful. So, uh, yeah, appreciate that. That's that's really cool. He thought I was going to pull out a Black Bay Pro. Hey, you know, I wanted to buy a watch when I was out there, and I wanted to see the Black Bay Pro. I did get to see the GMT, the root beer steel, you know, the steel and gold Black Bay GMT, but I have not seen the Black Bay Pro in person, and I'd like to. I think it looks really good. I bought a different watch though. I'm wearing it. This is the Navitimer reference 806. This is the 1959 re-edition and I placed it on a Stabe Milanese mesh. This is not a factory uh, strap, but I did want to show you guys the box and stuff um, uh, just for fun. So this is the box that it comes in. You can see 1950 or just 59 on the front. It's, well, and it says limited here to 1959 pieces. But other than the outer box, it's pretty much a standard Breitling interior blue box with the uh, just the brown leather travel tote. And here is what's on the inside. Here's the strap that it came on. Not the biggest fan. It's it's a nice quality strap, but I don't know. I well, I think I'm going to have a couple custom straps made for it. And I'd like to see if the new Navitimer bracelet that's on the 41 millimeter size would be compatible on my 41 millimeter um, Navitimer re edition. So put that away. And they also gave me this cool little thing it says Brightling Captain. You open it up, and on the inside is a pair of pilot wings. So that is really thoughtful. Came home with a bunch of swag, guys. What's up, Puerto Rico? Tuning in from Puerto Rico. That's really cool. Bring that Brightling Thursday. I don't know if I'm going to make it on Thursday. We have a local watch enthusiast meetup happening here in Utah at, I believe, a bar downtown or a restaurant downtown. But uh, I've got um, a youth activity. It's a special needs prom. So I'm going to be at that having a great time. Combat straps. Yeah, I've heard actually a couple of people recommend combat straps for doing uh, really cool custom stuff. Brian says, I wish more watch brands would take cues like Rolex and out little quirky changes to models each year to make things more limited and collectible. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's only successful when there is great demand for the brand like Rolex enjoys. If it's another brand that doesn't have the, that uh, status, I guess you could say, in the watch in the watch scene, I think people would see that as a negative element. They'd go, hey, they're just throwing anything up against the wall to see what sticks. They have no direction. <laughs> you know, we can be really fickle as watch enthusiasts. So I think some brands could pull that off, but most brands, I think they need to uh, really be deliberate in what they're doing and what they're releasing. My goodness, someone tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago. That is super cool. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Okay. Hey, this DC, we're actually, I wanted to talk about this. I wonder if you were uh, the one that messaged me on Instagram. Let me uh, pull up my Instagram page here. I wanted to take a couple questions. Okay. So <laughs> first off, I, I don't go through my Instagram messages that often. I just get too many. Most of them are spam, like uh, people looking for advertising or, or whatnot. And then, um, and then I get a ton of questions on Instagram and I just don't have the time to respond to everybody. So if you want a direct response, the best thing for you to do is either send me an email or interact with me here in a live stream. Uh, if you send me an Instagram message nine times out of 10, 
I won't ever see it because I get there's just too many. But I saw I went through it earlier today and I saw two questions I want to address. And one of them is really close to DC's question here. And that is um, I'm just gonna read it here. This it's a pretty short message, but essentially someone says, first of all, love your channel. I was wondering if you could get your opinion on the VTNR. That's the new Sprite or the Riddler. That's the left-hand drive Rolex GMT Master 2, which I will throw up on the screen here. Let's uh, share my desktop. And we're going to configure the correct one. Yeah, right here. So this is the watching question. Um Mojo, who, who reached out to me, says, I have a legitimate shot at getting this watch, but would have to forego an upcoming Pepsi. Would you do it? The problem is that my collection consists of the green sub, the latest version, and a green OP36. I also have the duo face, duo face reverso and a black Datejust 36. Would, <laughs> would you think this is too much green in the collection? I know you have the Hulk, so I thought you'd have a good perspective on things. Thanks. So really nice message. I kind of feel bad that I never checked the Instagram messages. Um, but let's talk about it. Brian says Pepsi all day, every day. And shout out if you have an opinion between the uh, VTNR or the Pepsi. And would you go Pepsi right-hand drive? Would you go with the Sprite left-hand drive? Uh, shout that out in the comment section, but Mojo, I have no idea if you're watching this or if you'll catch this later. So maybe I'll send you a quick message after we're done here. Um, but <laughs> I would go with the left-hand drive, the newest, uh, VTNR over the Pepsi. But I say that, I say that because I would, I would take a Pepsi too. Like if I was offered the Pepsi, I would go buy it. If I was offered the, the Sprite, I would go buy it. If I was offered the Batgirl, that one I'd probably, I don't know if I'd buy. I might buy, um, but I, I certainly like the Pepsi and the Sprite more than the Batgirl personally. Uh, JT, what's up, man? Um, I did get your email, so I'll, I'll respond to you for sure. JT agrees with me. He'd take the, the left-hand drive. He'd take the VTNR. Larry, another one for Pepsi, Mike, Pepsi, and a silverback left-hand drive. So it seems like we're pretty split here. Uh, yeah, ditto on the Pepsi, VTNR all the way. And here's a good comment from Brian. I think the Pepsi will always be available down the line, but the left-hand drive GMT is going to be hard to get. And <laughs> I think they're all hard to get. Uh, but I, I don't know. We, we haven't really seen... The VTNR uh, proliferate the uh, authorized distributorship yet. So we don't know if it's going to be like, you know, um, where they make more of them, like the sub, or if it's going to be like a sky dweller where they just, they don't make a ton of them every year. So I don't know what the allotment for production looks like. I guess we'll find out over time, but the bottom line is they're all hard to get. And so if you can get a Pepsi, man, get the Pepsi. And if you're offered the VTNR down the line, buy that too. You're going to be safe buying both uh, depending on when they're offered to you. I think it's unlikely that you would be offered both in a quick turnaround time. Um, I, I've talked to a few authorized dealers around the country and the consensus, it's not an official rule, but the consensus that I get is if you're offered kind of a desirable or a stainless steel sports piece, once a year, like that's pretty frequent. Most people are not getting offered watches that, uh, that regularly or that frequently as, as silly as that may sound once a year. So I would say to, again, um, let me get the screen name, right. Mojo. Um, I would go with the new VTNR. I think it is going to be a collectible kind of like Brian. I think it's going to be hard to get and it's quirky. It's different. You know, I, I certainly would take the Pepsi too, if it was offered me. Um, and as far as do you have too much green in your collection? No, <laughs> uh, you've got a green sub. So the Starbucks and you have the green OP 36. I think it's kind of cool to build on the corporate color as a collection of Rolex. Like I, you have the black day, just 36, but if all of your Rolex models had their corporate color to some degree, 
I think that's kind of cool personally. So I would say don't don't be afraid of the green. Um, buy the one you would enjoy more. Or I guess that's not the right <laughs> that's not the right way to say it. Uh, what I what I mean to say is uh, let's say you have to switch. You have to tell your authorized dealer, hey, I know you've been getting a Pepsi for me. You, you say you have a realistic shot at the Pepsi, but if you like the VTNR more, say, hey, I'd rather get the VTNR. Just be upfront. They appreciate what you really want. Um, that's what I would have to say about that. So let me remove this. Yeah, left hand drive. Okay, so we're we're seeing we're seeing some more left hand drive comments here. I, I that's nice to see that I'm not alone in that. <laughs> but Peter says buy the root beer instead. Um, yes, the rancher for the win. We're in it right now. Such a lovely piece. Take a look at that domed plexiglass crystal. It carries a layer of sapphire over top, a thin layer of sapphire. Uh, that is just so pretty. The dial is reflective and layered. The font is exactly like the, uh, you know, the one from 1959. It's just ugh, such a great piece. So uh, I have to thank the rancher to a degree because he was talking about how much he loved his recently within the past few weeks with me. And then when I saw it in person in Pennsylvania, I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> he's so right. This is a great piece. And so I was fortunate to get one. Jonathan says the lefty makes him dizzy. The left. <laughs> I don't think it's lazy. I don't think it's lazy at all. And this is a good, good point here. Realistically, you can't go wrong unless you just don't like it. Then wait for what you want. Yeah, that's one thing that I think makes the Rolex market a little bit hard or difficult is the fact that... Uh, if you're offered something, most watch enthusiasts, they'll just take it, even if it's not what they really want. And that I don't think is, is making the market any better. It's making it more difficult for the people that let's say you were offered a, a, an Explorer, but you didn't really want to explore that much. You, you wanted something else, but you buy it anyway, because you think you're never going to get a chance again. And you've got to take that olive branch that's being offered to you. Uh, I, I think at least I think authorized dealers would appreciate if they offer you something and it's not really what you want, just say, no, thanks. I appreciate it, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm really looking for this watch. I think that would help us all a little bit. If we all did that. So if you had the left hand, would you wear it or put it in the safe? I wear my Rolex. I'll tell you what, I've got two out of the bank right now. Here's my Sky Dweller. Love to wear it. It's one of my favorite watches to wear. It's a roughly thirty to thirty-five thousand dollar watch on the secondary market at the moment. Which sounds kind of crazy, you know, walking around with that type of a uh, watch value on your wrist. And then the Hulk, I I wear all the time. I take this camping. I uh, you know definitely don't. I don't. I don't have safe, clean Rolex models personally. Um, but yeah, I would wear it personally. Yeah, I remember you saying this. You said, no, thanks. And I uh, tip my hat to you, the rancher. I, I do. I think that helps out. If you don't really love it, don't buy it, even though it's a, it would be a wise financial decision to add something of, 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 of a commodity, right, to the rotation. I was offered the Sea Dweller two-tone. I said, thanks, but no thanks. And he hasn't called me with any other model. And that that is the catch-22. Sometimes um, if you don't have any type of purchase history and you're offered something, generally the first thing that you're offered when it comes to Rolex is not going to be like a Pepsi or a Daytona or something like that. It's going to be generally maybe two-tone or a, you know, a Datejust or something that's quote-unquote less desirable. And if you say, no, I don't want that. I want the Panda Daytona. I mean, <laughs> you probably won't get that. Some watches you do have to build up a purchase history, but always buy what you're planning on buying and let those purchases work for you. So let's say your Rolex AD also carries Breitling or Omega or Cartier or another brand. And let's say you do want a Santos or you do want the Speedy or you do want something else that that authorized dealer sells, buy it from that uh, salesman that you'd like to get that 
desirable watch for and let that purchase you were already planning on making work for you. I think that helps out. Avoid the hype. Yeah, for sure. You have to keep going in in person to build a relationship. It's really all about that. If you just call and never get to know the AD, you won't get anything good unless you're lucky. Yeah, if you cold call, that's not going to do anything for you. Uh, I I could get, if you, let's say, live in a remote area and you don't get to an authorized dealer very frequently, you have to cold call. You have to call in and, and introduce yourself and, and let them know you. Um, but if you're within a reasonable driving distance of an authorized dealer, you're not doing yourself any favors if you just call and, and say, hey, I want a Air King, you know. <laughs> that's not going to help you at all, I think. Uh, so definitely go in there, meet them, shake hands, and let them put a face to the name. Be friendly, be kind. Okay, Jonathan, you did get your first Rolex from them. A sub. Oh, that's awesome. That's a that's a good one. A good first one for sure. Not, not me. Not me, Mike. I, I don't wear two watches. Oh, on, oh, yeah, both wrists. Hey, let's do the next question here on Instagram. I've got another good one. Let me just pull it up. If I can find it. I think I took a screen. There's just so many guys. It's it's hard to put. It's hard to get through them. I think I took a screen to grab. So let me find that real quick. Hey, this is a good comment right here. I'm going to put that up while I, I search for the last uh, question here from Instagram. All right, got it here. This one is from Griff. And it just disappeared on me. <laughs> it, dang phone. Uh, well, uh, there it is. Okay. Hey, Bruce, love your content. I wish I could have joined in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm a PA guy. I grew up near Lancaster, hoping to catch you next time. I could use some advice. My father received my great-grandfather's Hamilton watch from 1930. He's giving it to me next time we are together. I'd like to get it serviced right away. Would you recommend that I go through the Swatch Group, or do you think it's safe to go to a local watch repair person in town I've only worked with Rolex's service center so far and um, no experience with other watchmakers. Thanks for any advice you may have. I'm excited to wear my great grandfather's watch sometime soon. And here is a picture of, boy, it doesn't look very good here on the screen, but here's a picture of uh, the watch from 1930. And if, if you're in that Lancaster region, Definitely go by the National Watch and Clock Museum. There's a whole case full of uh, of, of Hamilton, uh, vintage Hamilton that's really cool. Uh, original references. There's also a case showing the different dials that they made, porcelain dials and stuff. I mean, there, there's, I mean, the birthplace of Hamilton, there's a lot of Hamilton history there at the National Watch and Clock Museum. But to answer your question, if it was my watch that I was getting and I wanted it serviced, I would not go to, I'd not send it into Swatch and then have them do it. I would uh, definitely find a local watchmaker that I would trust to do the proper service. And um, if you don't know someone, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, here it is. And he does take in models that are mailed in. He's local to me here in Utah, but Funkhauser Jewelry, um, it, it's here in Sugar House in Salt Lake City. 
and he is a wizard. He's the best watchmaker um, that I've personally met. And I've had him repair and service things. He does a ton of vintage stuff. He would have uh, all the proper parts or have access to the proper parts to, to uh, properly service that vintage Hamilton. So if you don't have a trusted local watchmaker to you, I'd recommend Funkhauser Jewelry. It's a one-man show. His name's Chris Howard here in Utah. And you can contact him either um, phone or you can send him a message here on the website. But that's what I would recommend there. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Are you talking to me? Zoo says, I was looking for your YouTube channel and type Bruce Willis instead of Bruce Williams. Whoops. Yeah, I mean, Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis is a pretty cool dude, for sure. And RGM is also out there in Pennsylvania. And uh, they service Zinn for the United States, which I think is pretty cool. So instead of those getting sent back to uh, Deutschland, to Germany, they go to Pennsylvania for warranty work. Oh, I'm guessing, Rancher, you were talking to Steve. <laughs> You're going to get 14 APs. Very cool. So, all right. Um, what else do we want to talk about here? We Oh, hey, let me show you an upcoming watch I have. Let me share the screen again. This one is a new micro brand called the Stratonaut GMT. It's about a $1,500 watch right now. I think this is coming in the mail tomorrow for a video, but I thought I'd show it to you guys. I'm going to be giving it away on the channel after I review the watch. So it's a gift watch that I'll be giving away. Uh, 41 millimeters. You can get it on bracelet. You can get it, or actually it looks like it comes on extra straps, a leather strap, a nylon strap. You have the tool to make the change here and you have a USA made watch travel case. And so let me just show you a couple of pictures. That, that looks pretty sharp. I like the Sunray blue. I wonder what's loomed here. I'm assuming, well, actually, here's a loom shot. So quite a bit is loomed, and it's a bitone loom application. That's pretty cool. Here it is um, on wrist. Looks like it kind of changes from a darker color to more of a brighter color, depending on the light that you're in. And it will have a quick adjust system in the clasp, which is nice. And then there's the full kit. So, oh, yeah, okay. So the tool is actually a pretty nice tool. That's impressive. I like that. But yeah, that's going to be coming this week. We'll film the review. It'll probably drop within the next week and a half. And then we'll do the giveaway. This will be one of the May giveaways. I'm going to, I think, have two watches for May to give away. And this will be one of them. So that's uh, that's coming up on the channel. Do you guys have any specific questions for me here? Hey, what watches, what's going on? Awesome. And then Mike... I have my grandfather's Hamilton thin line. I need to get this running again too. Yeah, if you don't have a good local watchmaker, um, do give uh, Chris a shout here at Funkhauser Jewelry. He really is good. And I don't get paid to promote him or anything like that. Uh, he, he's just a dang good watchmaker that I would trust with anything vintage really. Yeah. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any uh, specific questions you want to go over. I showed you all that swag from Tudor. I showed you the box for the Navitimer. I showed you that mat. Let me show you the clock again. This is this is what I'm excited about. I got to show it back here so you can actually see it. Man, check that out. That is pretty awesome. I think I'll just have to repair this bottom portion right there, and eh, maybe the top as well, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's the wall clock. And I'd like to add to this collection of wall clocks. Uh, there was a G-Shock Square promotional clock that came out a few years ago as a gift with purchase if you spent a certain amount. And at the time, there was nothing I wanted from Casio that was, you know, that met the threshold. And they were being sold for stupid amounts of money, the, the giveaway wall clocks on eBay. So I never picked one up. But I'd like to now. I, I really think that'd be fun. <laughs> oh my God, that's a big watch. Yeah, imagine it on a NATO. Oh, here's a good question from Kendall. Thoughts on the new Seiko 5 GMTs with the new movement? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of those. Uh, 
I don't think it's on their website yet. So we might have to go searching somewhere else. Seiko Sports. And Google's having trouble locating a relevant search here. I got to find a picture if we're going to talk about this, but I don't know if it's a true GMT. If it's a true GMT and it's under $500, there would be nothing like that on the market. And you know, with Seiko, they're not going to be buying a third-party ETA-based uh, GMT that's that's more of a dual time and not a true GMT. You know that they're going to be modifying likely the 4R platform or the 6R. I'm guessing a 4R modified movement to have the GMT feature. And again, if it's a true GMT, that would be amazing because Grand Seiko does it. The LX line or the Lux line from Seiko, they have true GMT caliber. So a Seiko 5, a Seiko Sports with a true GMT in that case, that would just be incredible. So yeah, I'm not seeing... I'm going to have to just go on a YouTube video and... Yeah, here we go. Let's do this. So here is a picture of it and we'll go full screen so it looks a little bigger. But essentially, here are the renders, and you can see it's a 5KX case, so we will have drilled lugs. It'll be 41 and a half-ish millimeters. I think Seiko says 42, but it always measures in a little under that when it comes to this case. And there's going to be a Jubilee-style bracelet, and I'm guessing it's going to be classic Seiko, a little bit rattly, and uh, probably a pin and tube system. And this is not a ceramic bezel. This is a metallic bezel. It looks like it has a bit of a sheen to it. And then obviously beautiful sunray dials and your classic color schemes. you got a Batman color scheme and all black with red. And then the Seiko classic orange and a hint of a sunray on this one with gold accenting and the orange I am all about. Uh, this is be the one that I would want to buy over the other two, which I think are safer and more conservative, but less true Seiko, I think. You know, Seiko's been doing this color scheme for a long, long time. And I think the <laughs> I think it looks really, really good. So rotating bezel, I don't know if it's going to be bi-directional. And then you have an inner scale here. So you could technically keep track of a third time zone. Looks like we have just the date only with the Cyclops. And I'm not the biggest fan of a Cyclops on non-Rolex models myself, but, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> you can't get everything in one watch, I think, especially for the prices that these are going to be selling for. I don't know the retail price, but seeing it's a 5KX platform under the sports branding, I can't imagine this is going to be over a thousand dollars. I'm going to imagine it's going to be close to $500. And I think it's going to do really well, especially if it is a, a true GMT. Yeah, Rob is, I'm sure, going to pick up the orange one. I definitely want the orange one. Um, YZ80 says they should have done one in a pogish color. Yeah, I love the pogue. Let me, um, let me show you. The 5KX that I chose to buy is that limited beat maker from, um, from last year. It has kind of a modified Pogue color scheme. It's not like unhealthy pea yellow or mustard yellow like the old Pogues were. This is more of like a pale gold. So it's not perfect, but uh, it's definitely iconic Seiko. And I think this and a true GMT would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> and great comment from Tom for watches. No Tiffany Seiko GMT. Yeah, everybody's jumping aboard the, the Tiffany color scheme. And I've I'm not opposed to it. You know, I, I like that color, but it's nice that Seiko is at least leading off with some of the more basic colors, blue and black. And then obviously their, their orange that they've done very well with. So just the watch is asking if they could modify the 4R36 to convert the day to a 24 hour hand. Um, I, I'm sure you could modify. It looks like from this video from, I think, watch Chris. It says the caliber is called, called the 4R34. So it's going to be based off of the 4R, which technically 
it's kind of a throwaway movement these days at uh, like a 4R36, it's cheaper just to buy a new movement than to uh, try to replace some components that go bad. So I'm wondering, is the 4R34 going to be kind of a throwaway GMT movement or it's going to be a little bit nicer? And, uh, you know, how how's the grade, all of that stuff? I'm really looking forward to seeing more, getting more information on this for sure. Dave says, I enjoy my 007. It's a great do anything tool diver. Yeah. I mean, these, these cases, they're just the right size and they're comfortable. They're versatile. I like the 5KX a little bit more than the SKX personally. I like the drilled lugs. I like the open case back. I like the, you know, the dial colors, the applied markers and whatnot. Um, I do know that it has less water resistance, but uh, the SKXs are awesome too. Kendall says they're going to be under 500, which you know, that, that sounds, that sounds good. Sounds really good. And the rancher has, do I read and address every comment? No, I, I can't even see them all. Uh, no, I don't. I try to get, um, I try to get most of them within one day of a video going live. I, I try to, but I, it's, it's a never ending, um, situation. I, I can never catch up. So here's, here's a question from the rancher. I like the looks of the new Longines. But having issues with the MSRP, let's pull that watch up and talk about it because I think a lot of people are getting excited about it. The Zulu time. And I went to my local Longines authorized dealer and said, hey, when you get one in, I'd love to come take a look and film it, post it on my YouTube channel. And they said, okay, we'll let you know. It might be a month or two before we get any, but they did order um they did order multiple. So let's scroll through this. It's attractive for sure. You have a nice case, nice bracelet. I like this green color. I like the gold accenting. I like the fact that it's a chronometer. I like the fact that it's a true GMT. Um, again, that's very uncommon. Generally, Rolex and Grand Seiko have been the only brands that, that uh, gosh, just show me the watch already. Come on now. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Hey, a quick release bracelet. I didn't know that that was a part of this watch. That's a good move. 72 hour power reserve. Very nice. Okay. Just show me the watch. Come on, guys. Uh, 100 meters of water resistance, it looks like. Bi directional ceramic bezel insert. And the bezel is not loomed according to this piece of text right there and boy there's a lot going on with this didn't just show me the picture yeah show me the pictures show me the price that's not it shop there we go sorry guys bear with me three thousand dollars on the bracelet so what would that be competing with? That's a quartz GMT from Grand Seiko, a true GMT. If you spend a little bit more, you can get a stainless steel a Black Bay GMT, the Pepsi. Those on a bracelet, I think, are 3500 which is pretty crazy. That's a great value. So this at retail price, $3,000, that's, you know, that's quite a bit for a Longine, a modern Longine. It's certainly a nice watch, a chronometer, applied markers, applied Arabics and a you know a, a date wheel that's color matched that's really nice 42 millimeter a little bit large a little bit thick at almost 14 but i think the fit and the finish is going to be very good on this a uh, five-year warranty and it's a screw down crown that's good i think it's attractive i think it's versatile i like that those little diamond markers cutting in to this outer index track uh, yeah, I think this is very sharp, but the retail price for a Longines is fairly high, you know, fairly high. I like this one quite a bit. I like the green, green and black. I think that's going to be very, very attractive. Now, as far as pricing, when it first comes out, I think everybody buying at uh, an authorized dealer is going to pay full retail just due to the demand. When I went into my local AD that carries Longines, uh, they were they said that every day someone local calls about it and, and asks about it. So I think there's good demand for this watch. So initially everybody's going to pay full retail 
And I think there's going to be a couple of people that buy it and then decide, okay, maybe I didn't want to spend three grand on a Longines or maybe it's, it's just too tall or too big for my wrist. And they're going to post them up for sale. You're going to, you know, see them pop up on watch recon. And I, I don't think, um, I, I think you're going to be able to find a discount here or there, but it's going to take a little bit of time for discounts to come into effect for the new Zulu time. Um, so I think if you want one, you're going to have to be prepared to spend around $3,000 and it looks like a heck of a watch. It looks like it's worth the money to me. But then you you look at what else is available, especially with the true GMT. And you're looking at uh, base level Grand Seiko. Granted, it would be a quartz and you'd have to spend, you know, a thousand, uh, probably more like two thousand dollars to get an automatic or a spring drive GMT. And then obviously the Tudor, about five hundred dollars more at retail. You can get the Pepsi. So it is kind of a tough price point, but I think it's going to sell very, very well. Let me uh, check the chat here. I can't get past the five stars at the bottom of the dial. It would look cleaner without it. I don't mind that as much. Um, I mean, you look at the text here, Zulu time and chronometer, it's all done in a sloping manner, kind of like Seiko with their pyramidal form of their prospects uh, signature. So I think it's fairly balanced. The thing for me is your date wheel, <laughs> it's kind of floating up in space a little bit there. And I don't think you have a cutoff six. That wouldn't look good. What would be ideal if, is if Longines just slightly scaled this down to where it was more like a 40. So that date wheel didn't feel like it was kind of floating in the dial there. It was more down toward the true six position. I think that could help a little bit, but uh, you know, that's just my personal opinion. YZ80 says ball has a true GMT at just under three K. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's other competition for sure. Check out the new Baltic GMT. Those are nice. Um, let's look it up real quick. I, I think I've seen them. Baltic. Oh yeah, that's very, very sharp. Kind of Rolex-esque for sure with the way they've done the font there. Vintage Rolex, obviously not the exact same color, but the Aqua Scaf GMT, about a thousand uh, euros. We've got applied markers, looks like. Sop rod movement, okay, the C125. 42 hours power reserve. Yeah, that's again, a little pedestrian these days. Uh, the Longines will have three days. We'll have 72 hours. The Tudor has 72 hours. Grand Seiko has 72 hours. I don't know what the power reserve would be on the ball, uh, true GMT. But yeah, that's that's sharp. It's very sharp. Beads of rice looks good on that for sure. Thanks, Brian. And okay, you have the uh, Aquascaf non-GMT. Let's take a look at that real quick. So just the diver, quite a bit less. That's almost half the price. And it looks like it's the same case, probably the same level of detail on the dial and whatnot. Sandwich cardinal markers, non-applied. Okay, but so there's going to be some other subtle differences. And let's see. Oh, this is a Miyota. So that's that's a big part of the price difference for sure. Instead of a sop rod, Swiss made, you have the Miyota, which is not a bad movement by any means. Um, I don't think it is. Beads of rice. Yeah, that's that's a sharp looking watch for sure 39 mil great size yeah i like that I like that yeah i don't think it ha it's, the longine does not have a, a display case back so let's just take a look at that again real quick uh oh Yeah, there's the case back. So you can see the little button for the quick release, which is nice, but you have a bolt on case back, 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown. Here's your wings logo over a, a sphere, uh, the, the world. So that's, uh, that's pretty sharp. Again, I, I really like that green more so than the other colors.
All right. You guys have any other questions for me today? Anything you want to chat about? We talked about the Seiko. We talked about the Longines. We talked about some of the other things I had going on here. The, uh, the Breitling box, the Omega and Tudor hats and stuff, the wall clock from Oris. I do have one other thing I can show you guys here real quick. I have a few extras from the Pennsylvania meet, but uh, I had some mugs made. They're just basic white mugs with the channel logo. Uh, and slogan, Horology Highlighted. And then I had some microfiber cloths made from the watch cloth. And uh, this one has my logo done in the outline of the state of Pennsylvania with my Grand Seiko Show Show uh, right here as the background. And I put this and a couple little tiny stickers in a little just giveaway for those that came to the meet in Pennsylvania. And I have a few left over. So I guess if, if um, anybody really wants some channel related swag, if you want to email me, you're welcome to do that. I'll just ask you pay for the shipping. Uh, but you know, I won't charge for the mug or the cloth or anything. If you're interested in that, here's one more question. Let's hit this before we end the stream tonight, guys. Best used Panerai to buy. Okay, that's a good question. You can go two different routes. You can go with the ETA days of Panerai when they were more simple, but you're going to buy a, you know, a decade old watch. Uh, or you can go with their in-house days, which they've done some pretty cool stuff. And um, so I have a friend that was looking to sell the PAM 992. And let me pull that up uh, and show you, excuse me, show you guys what that is. I'd say this one might be the most exciting one, in my opinion. So this is what it is. It's a radiomere case, eight days power reserve, 45 millimeter. It sounds big, but it actually wears really nice on wrist. You have true blued hands, your hours, minutes, and subsidiary seconds, and then awesome loom sandwich dial right there. The retail price is $8,500. And it comes on a nice strap, wire lugs. And if uh, they have a display back picture, it doesn't look like they do. Uh, they do have an open case back. And it's a big watch with a, you know, a big display case back showing the movement, which is kind of industrially finished. And it's nice. You know, you have 100 meters of water resistance, a screw down diamond crown. And then this is called patina steel. So, uh, oh, there's the case back picture. So you guys can see. Uh, very kind of industrial looking, but a free sprung balance, micro perlage work in the background, eight days of power reserve. That's really cool. Um, I think eight year warranty as well. But the patina steel I was mentioning, it's a chemical process that uh, takes away a discernible finish on the case. And so you look at this and you think, well, is that a brushed bezel or a polished bezel? You can't really tell and it hides wear very well. So it's a watch that you're not afraid to scratch, has a ton of power reserve, has an in-house movement. Uh, the retail price, again, $8,500. Uh, you know, you're going to buy it used. You're going to get a decent price with that. I think my buddy was asking thousands less than that uh, for his pre-owned example. And, you know, since it has the patina steel, it's going to look nice. You know, it's not like you're going to buy a beat up looking watch. So I'd say if I were buying a used Panerai, I'd be going with the 992, the eight days radium here. I think that would be the one for me. Mike's been looking at the uh, 1351 and the 223. Yeah, those are good too. Panerai has a vintage chronograph panda with a Zenith movement on a bracelet similar to a Daytona. Oh, interesting. Uh, is, that a, is that a good value? I don't know what they're going for. Now let's hit one more. Let's hit two more questions, guys. One from YZ80. Thoughts on the new Squale COSC1521. Let's look it up. Get a good picture here. 1521. Go COSC. I think it's this one. Classic uh, COSC certified. Looks like it has a loomed bezel, which is nice. 
And then you have uh, the elabor grade. So you have the blued screws for uh, the movement within. Dial and bezel improvements, applied markers. Yeah, I think that was that was new. I had a, my dad bought a 1521 years ago uh, and it had printed markers if I remember. So we have applied markers there, very sharp layout. Um, hey, this is what I think, YZ80. Anytime you can get a certified chronometer and it's 2000 or less, and you have a brand, obviously the, the brand has changed hands ownership over the, over the years. And there is questions on as to where they're serviced and all that stuff. But you have a brand with some history, some cool history with uh, an original design. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, am I going to run out and go buy one? Probably not. Um, but I, I certainly can appreciate this. Uh, crown with the four o'clock tucked in very nicely. It's going to get comfortable wear. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty sharp. Let's see, uh, it doesn't say the price though. I'm I'm guessing it's two thousand or less. Let's see. Oh, it's quite a bit less than that. So it's thirteen hundred Swiss francs. Yeah, crazy. Oh, it's a Salita COSC certified. Yeah, that's great value right there. I imagine they're going to sell that pretty quickly. And let's get one from Amjad. Why is the constellation overshadowed by the Speedmaster and the Seamaster? Well, I think it kind of comes down to a couple of things. One, Speedmaster and Seamaster, they are sports watches. And the watch market is heavily dominated by sports pieces, at least in the United States. And uh, so you're going to have more people naturally gravitating toward some of those more robust looking sporty watches, even though the constellation has awesome history and you could wear it every day. You could take it in water if you know, you need to, it's, it's, uh, it's not like they're uh, delicate watches by any means, but here's the big thing. Omega has really invested a lot of time and advertising into the Speedmaster and the Seamaster, and they probably pay a whole lot of money, millions of dollars, uh, to put their sports products on the wrist of James Bond, right? And then the Speedmaster having arguably the coolest dang history out of any sports piece with being selected to be a flight instrument, to be a tool used by astronauts that flew to the moon and, and went out of uh, low earth orbits, you know, the, the history with being the moon watch and then the sports pieces being used by James Bond and that type of glamor that that brings. I think uh, the constellation will always be overshadowed by those more sporty pieces, but that's just my opinion there. But I think Brian kind of agrees with me. History complication more popular because of the moon and James Bond uh, yeah, and I think that's a good summation of what I was trying to say. So awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to stream real quick tonight and, and show you guys a few of the things. Again, reach out if you want uh, a mug and you're okay paying shipping to wherever you are in the country. Uh, I'd be happy. I've got a few extra, so I'm happy to give those away if you're interested. And uh, stay tuned for a whole bunch more content. I filmed like 20 watches when I was out in Pennsylvania, so I'm editing those up right now. Those will be dropping. I have a video coming on the National Watch and Clock Museum. I've got a video about the condo that's out there that you can go stay at. It's in it's in Clock Towers. It's in the old Hamilton factory. You can go stay in that as a complimentary perk if you're buying a luxury watch from Brent Miller Jewelers. So there'll be a video about that as well. And of course, we have uh, you know that upcoming Stratonaut that we'll be doing a video on shortly and doing a giveaway on the channel. So uh, that'll be pretty fun. But guys, thanks for uh, tuning in today. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great evening and I'll see you next time.